we're going to start this video by looking at a rather serious example. We're going to do a significance test to decide if the drinking water in this town is safe or not. The point of this video is we're going to examine what happens when we make the wrong conclusion. Every year I ask my students if they watch Arrested Development and I always get between one and zero yeses. Come on! Come on! Come on! But I'm still going to show this anyway. I've made a huge mistake. In this video, we're going to look at what happens when you make mistakes. I've made a huge mistake. It's just, it's a very good show. Okay, I have to do it. You have the knowledge and skills to answer all of the questions on this first page, one through eight. I'd like you to try those um, on your own, and then we'll go through it together, and I'll point out some important vocab you have to know. So pause the video and do one through eight now. So we'll start with our null hypothesis. That's um, the status quo or the thing that we think is already true. In this case, that would be that the water is safe. Okay, so mu equals 70. That would be the water is safe. And then our alternate would be mu is greater than 70. I guess I should write what these are, huh? Null and alternate, yikes. Off to a great start. I also need to clarify um, what I'm talking about here. So where mu, is the true mean amount of lead in the drinking water. So there's our null and there's our alternate in words and symbols. Now in number two, we conduct a significance test and we get a p-value of 0.045. It just says to interpret. We're not concluding, we're just interpreting. So that's the first part of our four-step process conclusion. Um, the probability of getting an x-bar of 70.5, I think it was, or higher if the null were true is 0 0.045. That's all you need for the interpretation. In number three, we're asked like about our conclusion. So based on that p-value, should they keep the current water or switch? Well, that p-value is smaller than 0 0.05, so we would reject the null. And if you look above, you can see that if we reject the null, we're concluding that the mean amount of lead is greater than 70, um, which means we're concluding the water is not safe. So they should probably start drinking bottled water. Okay, now number four, if you made that decision and it turns out it was wrong, what would be the consequences? So you convince everyone in this town that the water is not safe when in reality it's fine. The consequences, um, that's a lot of money spent on water bottles and a lot of time spent distributing water bottles. Also not good for the environment to be using that many water bottles when you have free water just coming out of the tap that's totally healthy. So if that decision is actually wrong, what we've committed is called a type 1 error. You've rejected the null, but it was actually true. Anytime you reject the null when it was actually true, we call that a type 1 error. All right, let's keep looking through these examples. Given the water is safe, how often will this occur? So if we set our significance level at 0.05, we've kind of set this threshold. The area to the right of that significance level is 0.05. If we get any X bar in that little area, we're going to reject the null and make this type one error. So the probability of making that error is 0.05. Now in general, the probability of a type one error is whatever your significance level is. 0 0.05, 0 0.1, whatever it is because um, the significance level is basically saying, this is my cutoff, this is where I'm going to reject. And a type one error is rejecting, but you shouldn't have rejected. Okay, so we'll keep going. Now we're gonna suppose that the p-value is 0.14. So if that were true, that p-value is much larger than our significance level, so we would fail to reject the null, and we would conclude that the true mean is not greater than 70. So we'd say, yeah, the water is safe, um, no need to use bottled water, it's totally fine to drink. You can see where this is going. If this decision is wrong, the consequence of this error is pretty serious. People might drink unsafe water thinking it's safe. That could lead to people getting sick or dying. Committing this mistake is called a type 2 error. You fail to reject the null, but you should have rejected it. It's false. So type one, you reject the null, but it was true. Type two, you fail to reject the null, but it was false. Another teacher taught me this way of remembering it. Um, if you ask someone out and they reject you, 
you're all by yourself. There is only one of you. So reject, if you get rejected, it's a type one error. Um, but if you ask someone out and they fail to reject you, now there's two of you, type two error. It'd be pretty weird if you ask someone out and they said, I fail to reject this invitation for a date. Is that a red flag? I don't know. Maybe it's just weird. <laughs> anyway, that's one way you can keep track of which one is which. But just remember that with both the type one and type two error, you're making a conclusion and it's the incorrect conclusion. So type one, you're rejecting, but you're wrong. Type two, you fail to reject, but you're wrong. Now the last question on this page should be easy. Number seven's definitely worse because <laughs> in number seven, um, people could get sick and die. Um, so definitely a type two error is worse in this case. What we're gonna do in the next video is look at the probability of making a type two error and we'll learn how to minimize um, the probability of that happening. And that's the whole reason we look at errors. Before you do an experiment, you can decide, okay, type one error is like worse here. We wanna make sure we minimize that. Or type two error is worse. We wanna minimize that. As you might imagine, there's a bit of a trade-off. If you minimize type two error, you make the type one probability larger. But we'll get into that in the next video. For now, I just want you to focus on identifying which one is which and identifying the consequences of each. So on that note, take a look at example two on the next page of your notes and see if you can do this completely on your own. Pause the video and try it and then hit play and you can check your answers with me. So in this setting, type one would be the manager rejects the null, but it was actually true. So she's concluding that the proportion of customers who have to wait has gone down with the new employee, when in reality, um, it hasn't decreased. So in other words, she thinks the new employee has helped the problem, when in reality, it has not helped the problem. Type two, she fails to reject the null, but it was actually false. So she concludes that the proportion of customers who have to wait has not gone down, when in reality, it has. So in other words, she thinks the new employee is not helping the problem when in reality, it really is fixing the problem. I don't know what it is about explaining type one and type two error out loud, but it's surprisingly hard to get it straight when you're just speaking. I highly recommend that you write down um, each part. Like see how I've written, she rejects the null, but it was true. So this means, so this means like I'm writing out each step. I make fewer mistakes when I do that. Okay, now, which is more serious? I would say type one is probably worse because the problem hasn't been fixed, but she thinks that it's been fixed. So you're still gonna have angry customers that are waiting for a long time, but she won't, the manager won't realize it. So she's not gonna keep trying to fix the problem because she thinks the problem doesn't exist anymore. Also that additional employee working the drive-through could be using their time better somewhere else where they actually could be making a difference. Um, now, I always have students argue that type two could be worse from the employee's point of view. Like, you're fixing the problem, you're making things better, but your manager doesn't realize that it's working. I see how that could be frustrating, to be fixing the problem, but your manager is like still mad at you for not fixing the problem. So sometimes these questions can go both ways. The important part is that you can back up your claim. Um, as I wrote there, you'd have a hard time convincing me in the first problem that type one was worse than type two. If one of them involves death, like that's that one is worse, <laughs> usually. Okay, so then based on um, question two, do you agree with the company's choice of a significance level of 0.1? Okay, so no, type one is worse, so we would want to minimize the probability of that error happening. So we'd wanna choose something smaller like 0.05 or 0.01. So I wrote a note in here. These are actually notes from last year when I was um, out. So this was me like teaching my class even though I was at home sick. Uh, we see later in the chapter, which next video, um, that making type one error less likely actually makes type two error more likely, they're related. Um, but that's why we have to decide which type is worse so that we can minimize the one that's worse. Okay, so the p-value of the manager's test is 0.0385. If we're interpreting, we could say, um, assuming the true proportion of customers who have to wait more than two minutes is 0.63, so assuming the null is true, the probability of getting a p-hat of 0.576 or something smaller is 0 0.0385. Based on that, we would have to reject, um, we would reject the null because that is smaller than our significance level of 0.1. So if we did make a mistake, it would be a type one error because we're rejecting the null. If we're rejecting the null, there's no way we're making a type two error because a type two error starts with us failing to reject the null.
as I mentioned, the important part for now is identifying which error is which and identifying the consequences of each. We won't worry too much about the probabilities of these until the next video.